Hello there, this is Robbie Phillips, um, your host for this presentation. I'd just like to start off on the focus areas for loan working. Um, loan working, I think, is a very underrated and underestimated uh, potential risk to all workers working in certain areas. The pre this presentation will focus on pool plant, pool tank areas, and the pools or other associated water areas and potentially unsafe loan access. Now that's got a wide ranging uh, remit. These areas have their own unique risks. Uh, risks, they need risk assessments and controls. It's essential to recognize the other places with identical risk. For example, water test in pool site. Uh, I'd highlight, for example, uh, pool caretakers, et cetera, who might not have any swimming or um, lifeguarding qualification. General pool tank maintenance, we'll come on to that later. Contractors on pool site or in a plant room, how we control them and how they work with you to make sure that their personnel are safe and you are covered. So who are loan workers? This is, this is the definition from HSE. A loan worker is someone who works by themselves without close or direct supervision. They work in all sectors, including the leisure sector. Include site-based staff and others, contractors and self-employed working within, uh, for example, a leisure center or any other site. Legislation. The Management of Health and Safety at Work Regulations 1999, the overriding regulations together with the Health and Safety at Work Act 1974. Relevant again is confined spaces regulations, which we often find in large leisure centers with pools uh, and the diving at work regulations. I put this one in because um, you might have people who might want to come in to repair um, items on your pool tank bottom when the pool is full, and they should not be working outside the diving at work regulations. Possible persons affected by any facility where pool plant is located. Pool owners, managers, or their delegated plant operators, school caretakers, swim school owners, and their staff, hospital maintenance staff, particularly relevant, obviously, with hydrotherapy pools in uh, these sort of areas. Pool contractors, pool builders, any person where loan access is authorized. Facility examples uh, are swimming pools, uh, leisure pools, hydrotherapy pools, interactive ward features, spa pools, and spa baths, for example. Critical questions for you. Can you identify any of these groups? Do you recognize similar areas in your building? Have specific risk assessments been developed and regularly updated for this working? Are tra tracking contact systems in place to safeguard these personnel working in these areas? Is it safe to work in these areas? Some of the older pools have voids, for example, around the pool tank, and I'll show you some Im images of those towards the end of this presentation. Others have uh, pump pits, for example, where somebody has to go down into a pit to change the pumps over, uh, change strain, trainer baskets, et cetera. Are they going down there on their own? Uh, and could they, be, could they be susceptible to gassing from chlorine gas, for example, which is much heavier than air? What, the, what you as an employer must do, the employer has specific duties to protect staff as a loan worker. This comes under health and safety guidance, health and safety executive guidance. This also applies if they're working for them as a contractor, a freelancer or self-employed. Guidance for employers includes advice to staff on providing support and training, ways of keeping in contact with staff, can two persons work together avoiding loan working? For example, one person could be changing the strainer basket, et cetera, and changing the pumps over, while the other could be uh, dosing, um, um, charging a dosing tank. What the employee needs to do, like any worker, you must take care of your own health and safety and that of others who may be harmed by your actions at work. Once again, all health and safety executives speak. 
you must cooperate with your employers and other workers uh, to help everyone meet their duties safely under the law. Duties and responsibilities of line managers. Managers of staff engaged in loan working will ensure that a must-do risk assessment is in place for activities being performed together with risk reduction control measures, essential. Any new tasks have to be risk assessed. So once again, you know, if somebody's coming in on a one-off basis to do some work in the plant room or even in the pool tank, then there must be a se separate risk assessment. Carrying out the risk assessment for loan working. Loan working is a risk to a significant number of employees in the UK. Therefore, it's necessary to undertake a specific risk, risk assessment in relation to loan working. Risk assessment should be carried out for each loan, new loan worker event or series of events that has not previously been assessed and should take account of what the loan worker will be required to do, also where they will be working. Consider foreseeable emergencies such as fire, equipment failure, hazardous tasks, gas escapes, illness or accident. A risk assessment template should be provided in the safe operating procedure, but line managers should consider and address their own responsibilities using the following questions before allowing any member of staff or others to undertake duties in a loan working worker situation. A more detailed risk assessment may be specific to particular instances of loan working. For example, working with chemicals in the plant room, working alone uh, in a pool when alone, working alone in a building where there have been reported incidents likely to threaten personal safety, assessment of site security and security arrangements such as alarm systems, assessment of particular work activities which might present uh, a risk, an example, as I've just mentioned, is charging of hazardous chemical tanks, calcium hypochlorite, sodium hypochlorite, acids into tanks. Working in pool areas alone, where the worker may be at risk from drowning, for example, non-swimmers working near pools, caretakers, contractors, meter readers, etc., meter readers, etc., in the plant room. All these could be there loan working and they, they are not even aware of it and perhaps, hopefully not, you're not even aware of it and you need to address these potential high risk problems. Identification of the loan working individuals or groups exposed to the risk, assessment of working conditions, hazardous conditions such as dangerous steps or ladders, unhygienic conditions, poor lighting, hazardous chemicals, deep water, etc. I went to a site recently where there was a three meter ladder. The ladder was precarious to say the least. And one had to go down there to inspect the actual pump, the dosing system, the pumping system and the filters. Now, if you had a chlorine gas, apologies for repeating myself, then chlorine gas would always go down into that area, stop in that area, build up, and then you have a hazardous egress from that particular area. Assessment of particular, particular activities which might present risk to loan workers, dosing chemicals, charging chemical tanks, swimming alone, conducting one-to-one -one lessons alone with a bather. Assessment of necessary equipment, the capacity of the loan worker to manage any high-risk situations. For example, in the pool plant, working at height, et cetera. You should have the equipment which is fit for purpose and then assess the whole risk for the loan worker if that is allowed and should they be there on their own. Evaluation of physical capability to carry out loan working, pregnancy, for example, disability, inexperience. Additional risk assessments should consider estimate of access emergency equipment that may be required. For example, torches, exit routes, emergency telephone numbers, first aid kit, telephone chargers, and we'll come on to it. We've also got devices which alert um, the management, the line manager in charge of loan working, for example, of any incident. Likelihood of incident occurring and having an impact on individuals and resources. A chlorine gas escape 
could have massive repercussions to the site and to the actual owners of that site. Severity of impact in terms of cost to people, environment, assets, reputation, and security. A chlorine gas escape is bad enough and that can ruin businesses, let alone somebody working in the area when you get a, a gas escape. Confidence that the necessary control measures are in place. What action needs to be taken to ensure that improvements are made? And we'll come on to this. It's constant dialogue with the people working down there. You should enter into dialogue for the actual personnel who work down there and contractors who come in. Contractors who are quality contractors will have risk controls in place for their, their um, agents working in the plant room, for example. The risk assessment process must document action required to control the risks. Everything is recorded. All visits should be, should be um, recorded. Who is going down the plant room? What are they doing down there? How long are they, how long are they likely to be? And from that, then you would say, well, we need at least two people down there according to the risk, the risk assessment. Risk assessment is a continual process and risk needs to be reassessed periodically and as conditions change, standard, standard risk assessment. Risk reduction control measures, as a minimum, risk reduction measures should include positive reporting practices from your staff and any incidents, obviously, implementation of a system of supervision of loan workers, providing as minimum for loan workers the means of raising an alarm. This will either be an organization's internal phone and or loan worker alarm device, depending on the severity of risk. Do you have a push button alarm, a panic alarm in your plant room, for example? Loan workers working in any part of the building should have easy access to a working landline. Where access, access to a landline is not available, they should have access, access to a mobile phone. In all cases, the latter is preferred. And devices, which I'll come on to, are even more preferred. Um, I have a colleague, a highly respected colleague in the leisure industry, in the pool industry, and he does not ever allow anybody down in the plant room on their own. Perhaps that's a lesson for us all. Working with staff. In short, this fosters a pro-safety among staff and professionals, raising their awareness of how and why incidents should be reported to facilitate the prevention process and contribute to the future safety of all staff. Absolutely essential. Today's minor incidents are tomorrow's major incidents. If an accident causes more than three consecutive days of absence, then obviously that has to be reported under RIDO. Has your staff been trained in appropriate strategies for the prevention of possibly injury as per your risk controls? Briefed about local procedures for the area they work in, including the pool, the pool plant, and associated rooms areas. Issued with appropriate safety rescue equipment. We'll come on to confined spaces and we'll see that there is a considerable amount of equipment that has to be considered and has to be supplied and has to be used and training given. Made aware of the procedure for maintaining such equipment, made aware of additional emergency procedures and consulted. Have your staff been consulted? I was a great believer in this when I managed facilities because it was amazing that the feedback used to come back and, you know, we averted uh, incidents in the future. Appreciate the responsibilities for their own safety. Understand the provisions for staff support by the employers and the mechanisms to assess such support. Appreciate the requirements for reporting and recording incidents occurring whilst loan working. The need to call, keep contact with colleagues, keep on questioning them, asking them if everything is okay and safe. Often how to obtain support and advice from management or responsible person on duty in, in and outside normal working hours. I mean, the pandemic has brought up a, a raft of particular problems. How did you control people who worked on site who went in periodically to check plant rooms, for example? 
Contractors on site, a critical area. You must work with your contractors and they must work with you to make sure it's a safe loan, loan working environment if that occurs. Do they have their own loan working procedure? As I said before, many quality uh, pool contractors will have a loan working procedure, which they will show to you, and they dovetail in with you as, as well. What are their tasks? Are they working with hazardous chemicals in the plant room alone? One incident recently where there was a gas escape, a chlorine gas escape, the guy was working on his own and nobody knew until he, started, he ran outside the plant room in panic. Are there tasks, are there tasks in dangerous areas? Have you got a team? Have they got a team? PPE, their own appropriate items worn, or do you issue them with PPE? Obviously, the former is the most practical. High-risk work. Certain high-risk work requires at least one other person. This includes in a confined space where a supervisor needs to be there along with someone in a rescue role and then somebody who's actually doing the task in the confined space. That is a qualified team, as I deem it. Charge and chemical tanks in diving operations. Pool risks in the vicinity of chemical storage. Classic uh, old slide of mine, doesn't look too clever, uh, but I put it there just to have a little bit of a shock element so people can really consider what they're doing. So is the working environment safe for a lone person to be working? Is it safe for them to work on their own? These questions keep on repeating themselves. Whether potential dangerous gases to be generated, as I just mentioned, exactly a similar situation to this. Confined spaces, including pits, pump pits are covered, pool drain down. So if we drained on the pool, for example, do we put fencing around the pool? You know, as soon as you start draining down your pool, that is a last resort. You know, you should consider other forms of work to remedy the problems with the pool tank. Do you have fencing, adequate fencing around the pool side? Do you have things like kickboards where anybody working in that, in that pit uh, can't be uh, injured by a falling spanner or something like that. Pool drain down fencing, which I've just mentioned, it's got to be adequate and it's got to be safe for anybody working in that pool tank void or around the tank. As you can see here, on the left hand side, this pool has been drained down, no fencing put up. The one on the right hand side is a confined space of an old pool where investigations had to go on, the, the actual pit itself was drained. So you can see it. it's fairly obvious that you have to have very closely controlled, safe, pool safe, safe operating procedures for these tasks. Evaluation of factors affecting physical capability to carry out loan work. And as we mentioned, we mentioned um, uh, pregnant people, disabled, inexperienced staff. Do they understand the language, for example? That's another one I've come across in my time. Access egress routes in the event of power failure, emergencies, et cetera. Are those clearly, are those clearly labelled? And do you have adequate lighting if the power goes down? Emergency lighting. Assessment and provision of channels for communication emergency and traceability of these staff. Site-specific training. So if somebody is working in a large project and you will pull a refurbishment, for example, are those people moving around? Do you know where they're going or they potentially will be? Is that logged in on their, on their entry into the, actual, into the actual site and their egress from the site? Is that logged in and logged out? Site-specific training, which is fairly self-explanatory. Appropriate safety devices, depending on individual circumstances identified, following risk assessment, a line manager will discuss providing a loan worker with appropriate devices, such as two-way radios, mobile phones, panic alarms, and tracker devices, to ensure the most appropriate safe, safety aids, safely, safety aids, sorry, are obtained. This issue should be discussed with all relevant competent parties. If you have a mobile phone, for example, do you have suitable signal? Is it tested before you go down there? Or if you change the mobile phone, is that getting a signal 
which can alert people or people can be alerted of possibly uh, an incident in other areas, a fire, a gas escape, for example. To ensure most appropriate safety aids are obtained, uh, this issue should be discussed with all relevant competent parties. Also, the loan worker will be advised in relation to possible risk from drowning and possible use of life jackets. This is possibly pre-contract, pre-contract for refurbishment, for example. Balance tax and restricted walkways as confined spaces. So what we're talking about is balance tanks, under crofts, very often in older, smaller pools, ventilation ducts. Sometimes you have completely dedicated ventilation ducts, which are walkways. Uh, very often they only have one access uh, and egress. So they, these are all considered confined spaces. Considerations, possible lack of oxygen in a balance tank and heat, for example, only one can find access and egress point, hot and moist conditions. Work in balance tank decks and voids in all cases should never be for workers alone due to the high risk. These areas are subject to confined space regulations. Please be very, very careful about this issue. Post-incident support. Management should have measures in place to investigate an incident due to long working. Any alteration to the NOP or the EAP can then be addressed. Workers may require counselling after any incident. Practical suggestions for the use of internal mobile phone, walkie-talkies and trackers. Loan workers will inevitably carry phones and they should always check for the signal. A phone should never be relied on as the only means of communication. If provided, walkie-talkies, trackers or mobile phones mobile phones should always be kept fully charged. And the loan worker should ensure that they use the device properly by familiarizing themselves with a the handset and instruction manual. If you're using trackers and walkie talkies, for example, then consider once again, a dedicated one, possibly a tracker for loan working if that is going to occur as in a controlled, controlled method. Emergency contact should be kept on speed dial where appropriate and the device should be kept nearby and never left un unattended. I picked this up. I just went on the internet. This is no advertising campaign. Uh, alone working tracking, quick and easy to set up. Man down alarm and panic alarm in one device. Has fall and tilt sensors to stop false alarms. Easy to use in emergency, one button for all functions. Alert, uh, alerts by phone call and SMS text message to up to six contacts. Users GPS location sent to mobile phone contact numbers. Cost effective uh, security SAM. No software. Long five day battery life in between charges. Compact size, lightweight. Now I just picked this up. I think it was something like 80 odd pound. Can you afford not to be without it? or a similar one, sorry. <laughs> loan working devices, loan working systems in the devices where applicable must be only used for the intended purpose to improve the safety of loan workers. To use them for other purposes will compromise the integrity of the system may deter loan workers from using. Practical measures, working on poolside or near to water can be a high risk operation. As recommended, any work undertaken on poolside should whatever reasonably practically carried out in the presence of at least another staff member or more according to the tasks. So, I mean, at the end of the day or the beginning of the shift, perhaps, you know, you need to relook at who is working and where they are and how many people are in that place or in the vicinity of that place or in the building. Very important to consider this. Under no circumstances should any staff member enter uh, or work close to deep water alone. Ensure suitable risk controls are in place. In all cases, a qualified, competent, life-saving member of staff should be present in the building at any time to work, of work taking place, as in one and two above. It is also it is recommended that all tasks should be timetabled to avoid loan working on poolside. For example, if you think about um, if, if if you think about backwashing. 
backwashing is not recommended during the bathing period. Now that can either be before the pool opens, providing you've got enough time for, for the, actual, um, the actual filter bed to come back or last thing at night. So, you know, that's an opportunity to dovetail and other work within those times. Another member of suitably qualified staff in the building who can be summoned to the area in the event of emergency, consideration to wear in life-saving gear, life jackets should be considered for loan workers. Very contentious issue here about, for example, caretakers and uh, maintenance staff working on their own in buildings and possibly water testing. Question is, we should be looking at those individuals, individuals, their, their, their um, capability of performing a task and working safely. So there's two very, very key points there. The risk of a non-swimmer collecting water, temp, sem, water samples is obvious. Any other work such as diving contractors should have in place suitably qualified personnel, both on the bank and in the water. And that is HSE Diving at Work Regulations 1997, a approved code of practice and guidance. So, I mean, these are professional people. I remember doing quite a lot of work on suction entrapment on um, in deep water suction outlets, you know. And the local, uh, the local guy, they say, oh, we can get our, di our local scuba, scuba divers. I say, no, you can't. I say, it comes under this act. So be very careful, very careful. And if any contractors do, can they show you their safe, their safe risk, risk assessments and controls? And can they assure you that they are working to these uh, conditions? Um, Suitably risk assessment code should be in place and contain specific requirements for these tasks. The contractor is required to provide specific pool-related risk assessment relevant to the site concerned. Similarly, risk assessments for specific or confined space has to be provided. This would entail three-person team in their specific locations at all time. This comes under the confined spaces regs 1997. All these specific operations should conform to HSE recommendations at all times. It is the duty of the site responsible person to ensure these regulations are adhered to, to include in diving works. Working in pool plant rooms can be a high risk operation due to the hazardous chemicals, high voltage electricity, etc. The release of toxic gases are a real risk and must be taken into consideration. For example, chlorine and carbon dioxide. Recommended any work undertaken at plant which should wherever reasonably practical be carried out in the presence of another staff member. All staff working in these areas should be suitably qualified and competent in the said plant room. And we, we provide as the STA um, specialist pool plant operations courses and consultancy in this area of expertise. It is recommended that all tasks should be timetabled to avoid loan working in the said plant rooms. Another member of suitably qualified staff in the building who can be summoned to the area in the event of an emergency. Recommended where appropriate, where appropriate gas alarms should be installed in plant rooms. For example, chlorine and carbon and dioxide gas monitors as a minimum, minimum and suitably situated to raise the alarm. And are they operating correctly? Are they maintained? Are they tested? Specifically, chlorine gas and implications for pool plant operators while slow work and using chlorine gas and carbon dioxide as examples, both gases are heavier in air, so they will migrate to the lowest part of the plant room. Think of the areas where these gases can migrate to on your site, pump pits, ventilation ducts, balance tanks, also high levels of com combined chlorine can add to the possibly, uh, possible elimination of oxygen. Both chlorine and carbon dioxide are classified, classified as substance hazards to health under the Control of Substance Hazards to Health Regs 2002 updated. Do you have low areas where these, these gases can accumulate? Please, please check. Chlorine gas escape is a serious incident. What are your risk controls during this pandemic? This was for the pandemic, so forgive me. Uh, it applies to everybody. So you can see here on the left-hand side of the diagram, chlorine-based disinfectant being dosed on the left-hand side. 
not enough space between the two points, an acid injector just down, down, down current of, of the pool water. And the pool is the water. Now, if you get any, if you don't have um, a cutoff device on your dosing control, when the flow, when the flow, when the flow stops, chlorine, cal hypo, sodium hypo, pH, sodium bisulfate, etc. These two could be dosed in the pipe. Once you return back to flow, then a gas could be given off in the pool, pool, pool tank area after reopening uh, the, the restarting the pump, sorry. And this could be cause quite a lot of panic and possibly hospitalization. But what I'm saying here is a potential design defect. Gas detection systems are essential, placed appropriately, regularly tested and maintained. And in the pool hall, and I mean, check that you've got a no flow, uh, no flow device on your pool dosing system. Examples of confined spaces, which should only be access accessed as a last resort by qualified competent staff or persons with safe site specific risk assessments and controls. So I've got a few of these to show you. So there's another one, which is, um, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long overflow channel, which goes into this pit and then goes returns back to the, to the actual circulation system. This is another one with scum trough channel access, only one, one access one access and one egress, needs confined space uh, equipment and a qualified team. Another one where there was a problem with, um, with a balance tank, uh, balance tank pipe work where, some, where people have to access this. This is another one for an outdoor, an outdoor interactive play feature. Uh, this is a filter, confined space, classified as a co confined space. Contractors working in there should be able to provide you with a safe operating procedure for entering the tank and grit blasting or whatever. This is one just to show you the amount of equipment you need to go into a confined space. You can see the guy is fully kitted out. He's got, um, he's got an oxygen detector and he's got all the relevant PPE. And you can see lines going down there to get him out if anything should go wrong. Revision questions, long working. Do you have areas where long working occurs? If so, how is it managed safely? Can the works be scheduled where two persons are working in the same area, possibly on different tasks? Do you know what tasks are being addressed in the areas where there are relevant long working risks? What are the procedures for working safely when the task contains potentially dangerous chemicals? Do you know what tasks the contractors are addressing? Risk assessments and sur survey services, we could address these items uh, by detailed site questionnaires, site visits, post-incident analysis, online key staff interviews, risk assessments. Thank you very much, Robbie Phillips. Uh, and that's my telephone number there. I work very closely with Pool Oracle. And thank you for attending this webinar. Uh, on this virtual conference. And I'd also like to pass on a lot of thanks to the people who assisted me, Martin Hardy, Pool Plant Consultant, Luke Griffiths, Safety Trainer Awards, and the STA team, my team, for all their help. Thank you very much.